Hi guys and welcome to another video. So I thought today instead of doing an intro we'd just jump straight into it because today I am filming a day in the life. So today I am doing it all on GoPro um, because I'm actually in charge of the farm and looking after everything today and looking after all the animals on my own which doesn't happen that often anymore. So the first thing I do in the morning is head round to the stables and I grab Chili's inhaler and I pop some water in his feed. So you'll notice that Chili gets two extra feeds um, than the rest of the horses and that's because he has to have so many Pyroton in the day um, and he has to have 10 in the morning. So that's why he gets a morning breakfast feed um, and the other horses don't. So I just grab all the hay nets and all the bits and bobs and head straight down to the field. So each of my horses in the morning gets a hay net of hay. That's because we don't have that much grazing at the minute. As you can see from our fields, they're pretty bare because the horses have eaten them down and we're at that point in summer where the grass isn't really growing. Um, and we also have strips at the bottom of each field that is um, cornered off at the minute so that the horses you know, aren't grazing the entire field so that they've got some that's growing for later on in the year. And so that's why I just go around and give each horse their hay net. So as I mentioned, Chili is a little bit special. Um, so he has to have his inhaler initially. Now the reason that Chili has an inhaler is because he has really severe allergies and this helps to open up his airways. Now he has got a lot better with his inhaler recently. Um, you'll notice I don't actually spray the inhaler when it's on his nose. I spray it and then pop it on his nose because he won't let me do it. Um, when it's on him, he just kind of shakes his head and moves away. But we've actually found that this is getting into his system okay. So thank you to everyone who I know in the past has sent me tips about this. Um, they've been really helpful. And while he's having his Boy. inhaler, he gets some carrot or some apple. Today you've got apple chopped up. And then he gets his feed, which is just literally some healthy tom and then 10 of his allergy tablets. And they are just antihistamines. So then Chili and the rest of the horses get their hay nets. As you can see today, Danny was very ready for his morning breakfast. So he was literally grabbing it out my hand. Now once I'm back up at the stables, this is normally the point that I make Chili's lunchtime feed. So as I mentioned before, it's literally just a handful of healthy tummy and then he gets 10 Pyroton crushed up and popped in there.
So once I've done that, I then grab the shavings fork for poo picking the fields and I also collect all of the horses fly masks. So today Caramel decided she wasn't playing ball and didn't want her fly mask on. She's normally okay to get it on but I think today she just saw that it wasn't my mum doing it who would normally do this and um, it was me and decided she was just going to trot around. So I took her hay off her in the hope that she would like come up to me um, but she just kept running away. So I did give her a hay back which you didn't see in the video um, but she does get her hay back and I couldn't get her fly mask on so I'll try it again later. So then I just go around the rest of the horses who are good and let me put their fly masks on and they also get sprayed with the fly spray just to repel any of the flies. Chili isn't a massive fan of the fly spray and always moves backwards, um, but the rest of the horses are good as gold. Now, Danny and Taffy do have um, some little boots on. So Danny has them because he gets bitten by flies quite badly, so there's some little fly boots. And the reason that Taffy has them is because he gets UV dermatitis, so it helps stop that. And then finally it is on to Mr Chunk. So Charlie doesn't have a fly mask because he has such a long mane. It's too much of a hassle trying to get that mane through a fly mask. Um, so he, his mane acts as a natural fly mask anyway. So he just gets a fly sprayed and then he gets sun cream. Now he's not a massive fan of sun cream but he does have a very pink nose that gets very burnt. So it's very essential that he does have it on. Um, so there we go, that is Charlie all done. And then it's on to probably my least favourite job and that is poo picking the fields. It's just one of those jobs that has to be done every morning to reduce flies um, and obviously to keep the word worm burden down. But it's just a job I really don't enjoy. So I literally just go around the field picking up all the poo which takes me quite a while and is normally about three barrel loads for our six horses. Sometimes I can squeeze it into two. Hey Jill. Sunshine. And then I just empty that onto the muck trailer that we have down in the field. And so once all that is done, I head back up to the stables and take my fly spray up with me and that is literally the horses done for the morning. So then I head back round to the house and the first thing I do is say hello to Balto and pop on his lead because it's time for his morning walk. Now those of you that are familiar with my videos and have watched me previously and probably know about our other dogs, you'll know that normally when we have a pet dog they free roam around the farm and they can just run about um, and get their exercise as needed now unfortunately with balto 
He's not quite as well behaved. He has this very strong natural instinct to chase wild birds and rabbits and deer. He's absolutely fine with our animals, but any wild animals he does try and chase. So we do have to keep him on a lead. So what we do is he goes for a walk around our front field. Now he tends to do a few laps of this and I also tend to take him for a jog if the weather's nice and cool because obviously if it's too warm he'll overheat. But we take him for a nice long walk around the field a few times and then we head back up to the house. So once I finish walking Balto, it is then on to preparing the animals veggies. So the bowl on the right is for the goats and today they're getting some carrot and lettuce and the bowl on the left is for the pigs and the pigs are getting carrot, a little bit of lettuce and um, some cabbage which the goats can't have and there I'm also going to give them a bit of cucumber. Now um, we just feed the animals what we have in basically so today we didn't have an amazing um, array of vegetables in it's normally just stuff that sort of seen better days um, and ready for the pigs to eat so the pigs get cabbage whereas the goats don't because the goats can't really have cabbage um, and the lettuce we isn't normally something we give them because romaine lettuce doesn't have an amazing amount of nutrients in it but it just adds a bit of diversity and it was going out of date um, anyway so that's why the animals get here and again with the cucumber the reason i'm giving it to the pigs is because they have a better cons like stomach than the goats and cucumber can cause goats um to get a bit of an upset tummy um, and diarrhea so first off i go down and i feed the piggies the piggies are always very happy to see food i think we all know that by now so each pig gets half each in their trough and you can see I try and mix it up a bit so that they um, each get sort of the same amount of the different veg. It's not always the easiest when the pigs are there and wanting to stick their noses in the bowls. So that's the piggies having their morning veg um, and obviously they get vegetables every single day and it varies each day as to what they get. It's generally what we've got in the fridge um, that's looking like it's ready to be used. And then it's on to feeding the goats. So I just take the goats down and I pop it in two of their buckets. They always try and all cram in one um, and I don't think they really realise that I'd put it in the second one. So they were basically just picking out the carrots in this because again, they will eat the lettuce but they always eat the carrots first because they're a lot sweeter. So next is on to the small fairies. So I start by filling up my jug of water and then I go around and empty each of the rabbit's water bowls and fill them up with fresh clean water for the day.
and each of my rabbits also get a clean bottle of water because I like to give my rabbits the option. Some prefer the bottles, some prefer the bowls, but I do like them to have the option of either one. But the Big Bunny Ariel only has a bowl um, because she's not really been using her bottle recently, so I actually give her two bowls of water. And Ariel also gets a quick spray with some um, fly repellent, but it's a bunny safe one. Um, just to make sure that there's no flies around her because she did um, have a few flies around her the other day. So now fast forward to one o'clock and it's time for each of the horses to have their hay nets. Again, literally they just get hay. Um, obviously some of my horses are on hay, some are on haylage depending on the horses. So we're on a mixture of both depending on their needs. And Chili also gets his inhaler and his feed at lunchtime once again. I swear I spend half my day emptying out hay nets. And for those of you wondering, the reason we empty them out is because we have so many hay nets that we have to refill them. And it's just more natural for the horses to eat from the ground. And then it's back to the stables to empty the wheelbarrow of all the hay nets and his inhaler and things. And then I make Chili's feed for the evening. And once again, that is just a mixture of healthy tum with some pyroton in, but it does also have folic acid on an evening as well. Then I just pop that to one side, ready for later on. Now normally the afternoon is when I ride, but when I'm at home on my own, um, I don't ride just because if I fall off or anything, there is literally no one here um, to help me and I have got all the animals to look after still. So instead of riding today, I decided to give Mr. Chunk a groom and I bought a new magic brush. So I was very excited to use this, to be honest. That's how sad. I am, I get very excited about new brushes, especially magic brushes, because there's just something really satisfying about having a new one, um, because they never seem to clean properly, uh, so I do go through them quite quickly. And if you can already tell, Charlie's winter coat is actually coming through and it's so depressing. I feel like summer has gone so quickly. I hate when the horses start getting their winter coats because I, can, I just know um, that dark nights are heading in. So once I've done Charlie's body all over it is then onto his mane which again takes me forever because he does have such a lovely long mane and it's so so thick. So today I decided that Charlie, I love his forelock and it's great for keeping flies away but I, it just annoys me that it gets in his face, bless him. So I decided to give that a plait um, just so that it was out of his eyes. Charlie again had different ideas um, and he always does this when I try to plait his forelock, he just sticks his head in the air and sticks his nose in my face and makes it pretty impossible for me to do. Once I had finally done Charlie's forelock plait 
and he was looking very handsome. I always love the way he looks when he's got his um, fall up plaited. Then I went on to do his legs and just brush out all of his feathers which really do need a wash um, but I didn't have the time to bath him today. And then finally it was on to his tail. Charlie has the thickest and longest tail ever um, so his tail always takes me forever. He is just one of those horses that a quick groom is never a quick groom with Charlie um, just because he has so much hair. And there we go, that's my handsome boy all done. Um, it was really nice just to spend a bit of quality time with him today. So I just let him off the head collar and he could go back to grazing. You're so handsome. And fast forwarding on again, so now I'm on to the evening and it's time to feed the animals. So the first thing I do is go and grab the pig's nuts. So this is what the pigs have for tea and I go and give them half a scoop each. Hey Primo. As always, starting with Primrose just because she's closer and then Pickle gets the other half of the scoop. So I always think the pig nuts look really bland but the pigs absolutely adore them and they eat them pretty quickly. You hungry girls? So then by this point the goats are shouting at me to come feed them so I head over to their feed bins so they get a quarter of their forage pellets. Um, in the little blue scoop and then they get a quarter of their muesli mix. Now our goats are looking a bit on the chunky side at the minute so they're not getting quite a full scoop. They are just kind of getting about halfway to three quarters and we also pop some garlic in there for them as well. So by this point the goats are going mental, they absolutely love tea time, it's their favourite time of day and if I can get in the gate without them escaping that is always a bonus. So again I just separate the feed, I try and mix it a bit so that um, one bucket isn't like all muesli and one bucket isn't pellet. But the goats then just go from one to the other and then all three end up shoving their heads in at once until they finally work out that they can eat separately. On an evening as well, when the goats are eating, I like to go and check the goat Hi. house. If you notice, Dolly always ends up on her own and then the two girls, the sisters always eat together. Right. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to check they've got hay and things for tonight. They've got plenty of hay in here. They always get their bedding in their drinker somehow. Let's get that off. Literally cleaned this yesterday and they've already got loads of bits in it. Right, there we go. Oh. That's the goat was done. Okay, so once the goats are done, it is then on to my least favourite animal, and these are the chickens. Now, I don't dislike the chickens, but there's just something about them and the flapping and the feathers. So normally my dad does this bit because I'm not great with the chickens, um, but as he wasn't here, it was on me to do them today. So I head into the rabbits, which is where I keep their food, and they get a quarter of a scoop of their corn and a quarter of the scoop of their pellets. And then I just head into the maze that is the chicken hut and again trying to get in without releasing all the chickens and for some reason they just walk in front of me and just make me nearly fall over every single time. So I just head in there and fill up um, both sets of the chickens feeders. Okay and so finally it is on to the bunnies and it's time to feed them. So firstly I head and get Big Bunny's um, bowl and she has like this double bowl and the reason she has that is because she is elderly and we do struggle to keep weight on her so she gets quite a bit of food um, because 
her stage in life she's really struggling with that weight and then the rest of the bunnies just get half a scoop each and um, because again they are a bit chubby at the moment so we don't have them want them having too much and then the last of my furries to feed is Mr. Balto. So at this time of night, it's time for Balto to have his meat. Now, normally, um, from someone who's got an animal science degree and has done nutrition, I wouldn't recommend feeding wet dog food. I'd feed a strictly um, dry diet. However, Balto struggles um, to keep weight on. He's not really a food orientated dog um, because we don't give him human food. He doesn't really eat dry food on its own. So he does get a tin of wet dog food um, or loaf every single day. Um, which to be fair he does really enjoy and he does eat this so it has really helped him keep his weight on because he did go through a point where he's looking a little bit skinny whereas now he's pretty much at the perfect weight. Okay so once Balto has been fed and all the animals around at the house are done it is then on to my final trip to the stables, the third one of the day. So the only thing I've got left to do tonight is to give the horses their evening feeds. So I just go into the feed room and the feeds were already made up so all I had to do was pop some water in each feed and give them a good mix. If you want to see what my horses eat then I have done um, a horse diet video which I will link below. So once all the feeds are made up, I then pop them on the mountain that is my barrow along with their evening hay nets and some fly spray and I head down to the field. So firstly I go around and give each horse their evening feed which is generally the favourite part of my horse's day and I make sure that I take off all of their fly masks and things as I do this. Then once all of the horses have got their feed, I then go around and empty their final hay net of the day. And any of the horses, so this is Danny and Taffy that have their boots on, I also take off their boots so that any of their protective wear and sun wear is off for the evening so they don't have anything on overnight. And it's just a case of finish off emptying the hay nets. So guys, that is the end of my routine. It came for all the animals and all the horses on my own during one day. I hope you guys have enjoyed this style of watching it via GoPro. Um, if you have, be sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you get a notification every time I post and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye guys.